In our last episode, we explored Chevy Chase, where we met Sarah Lyons and Lyons Pride. We died a lot to a super mutant behemoth. We shot a lot of mini nukes. And we got a short lesson on how VATS works with mines in Fallout 3. We also fully explored the Tenley Town, Friendship, and Farragut West metro stations. Tenley Town led to the Farragut West metro station, which led back out to the Capital Wasteland just outside the Super Duper Mart. And the Friendship Line also led back out to the Capital Wasteland. So both of these paths were, for us, a dead end. So we retraced our steps all the way back to Metro Junction and emerged into Vernon Square. On the other side of the gate, we climb some stairs and turn right. Ah, oh, great! Bleed and die! Oh, right out of the gate, jeez. Think that super mutants can't give me a break. All right, so it looks like that's what we're gonna be fighting here in Vernon Square. We arrive at the top of the staircase to find ourselves in a complete ruin. Buildings are toppling over into the street all around us. And at first glance, it's difficult to see where to go next. Off to the southwest, we see a road sign. Looks like Abernathy Street is going north to south and H. Patney Drive is going east to west. Well, we can start by crossing H. Petney. We find benches on a sidewalk here where people would have waited for buses. Moving east, we walk into a large plaza dominated by the vault Tech headquarters. Now, the vault Tech headquarters is a fascinating ruin to explore, filled with tons of loot and lore. But I already covered the entirety of the vault Tech building in one of my videos on Agatha's song. So I won't cover it again here, but if you do plan on exploring it, just bear in mind, robots, lots of robots. I'll go ahead and put that episode next after this one in the Fallout 3 Metro playlist so that you guys don't miss it. But since we've covered vault Tech, we can loot a Nuka-Cola machine nearby. And then since this plaza is a dead end, we have to turn around. As we return to the Metro tunnel, however, yeah! What? Oh, oh! There's a pressure plate in the middle of the road, and it was connected to these combat shotgun traps. Doggone it. Though I have to say, of all of the traps to have triggered, I'm glad it was these. At least with the combat shotguns, I can repair up the one I have, improving its damage and condition. But just as we finish repairing our shotgun, we come under fire from super mutants to the southwest. All right, well, I have that missile launcher. I might as well put it to good use. Nice to have them grouped up like this. Oh, bull crap! Bull crap! Ugh. Stinking vats, man. There you go, aim for the legs. Well, I mean, I'm gonna have to start dumping points into big guns here in a bit, but that's lower priority. We'll get there eventually. Moving forward, we can loot the corpses and then continue southwest. Dominating this section of Vernon Square is a huge statue. Three giant busts. No idea who this man is, but he looks intimidating. Moving west, we find a bunch of sandbag barricades guarding a shelf. On the shelf is a first aid box with some rat away, all right, and then two ammo canisters below it. Immediately using the rat away, we can see where that puts us. All right, we are at 678, better than we were yesterday, but still not out of the woods. We have got to find more rat away stat. Looking south, we see an alley. Moving about, we don't find any other way out, so creeping closer to the alley. Oh, great. More mutants. 
but they are trapped in this alley. Perfect. I think I just shot that between his legs. Aim for the feet. All right. Well, down a stack of missiles, but we got them. Creeping down the alleyway, we loot the bodies, and then we pick up a new radio broadcast. Ranger emergency frequency signal found. We can listen to it on our Pip-Boy. To anyone that can receive this, we are in danger and need your help. This is Butcher of Riley's Rangers. Our time is running out, and we are dangerously low on ammunition. Our broadcast point is the roof of the Statesman Hotel. If assistance is not possible, please attempt to contact Riley, who's made for Underworld inside the Museum of History. Keep your eyes open. We've left booby traps and mines to help slow the mutants down. Repeating message, this is Butcher of Riley's Rangers sending out an SOS on all known friendly frequencies. Ammunition supply is running out and we've lost a man. We're pinned on the roof of the Statesman Hotel by super mutants. If assistance is not possible, please attempt to contact Riley, who's made for Underworld inside the Museum of History. Roof access to the Statesman Hotel is only through the adjoining hospital. Please hurry. Butcher out. Repeating message. This is Butcher of Riley's Rangers. With that, we begin the quest. Riley's Rangers. And now we understand why we found those rigged shotguns outside the metro. Looks like we're going to have to watch our step. Now, I've already completed the quest, Riley's Rangers, in my video on the topic. In that video, we explored both the Statesman Hotel and the Our Lady of Hope Hospital. And so I'm not going to cover them again here. Instead, I'll put the Riley's Rangers episode after the Vault Tech Headquarters one in the Fallout 3 Metro playlist. Because it's a great story, they're interesting locations, and I don't want you to miss it. Moving out of the alleyway, we see the Statesman Hotel directly in front of us, and crumbling buildings all the way around us. But as we try to get closer, oh, we start to take rads. Moving, whoa, 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 ten? Ten rads? What the heck? Okay, uh, is that a crater? Stepping closer. Oh, yeah. Looks like something nasty is in there. Taking some Radex and putting on our radiation suit, we see that, oh god, this already pushed us up to 706. Well, we can creep closer to see. Oh man, and we immediately start taking on Rads. Standing at the edge of the crater, we're still taking on 10, 11 Rads. Oh, and we catch the attention of some super mutants. Retreating back to the alleyway. We can lay down a bunch of frag mines. They're coming for us and they got to go through this choke point. Oh, but my missile launcher just broke and this guy's coming for me. Well, we can hide behind this statue. Okay, and these guys are dead. Heading back to the alley. Oh, come on! I still had my radiation suit on, so putting on some talent combat armor, we can grab some frag mines. Oh, Woohoo, this guy's fast! Retreating to the other side of the statue, we can scatter these all the way around it. Can you take me? Little baby scared. Oh, God. How many more super mutants are there? With the mutants finally dead, we can head back down the alleyway and then hug the wall of this building and nestle ourselves into this corner to keep clear of the rads. Okay, so we've got a big problem here. This huge crater is right in the middle of our path. The Statesman Hotel is on the other side of it. Somehow we've got to get around that thing without taking any rads. A couple hundred more and I die. Well, we need to reconnoiter the area to see what we're dealing with. So putting on a radiation suit, taking some Radex, and doing a hard save here, we can slowly creep 
towards the crater. We're just going to see what's here and then reload the save. Peering into the crater, we see a crashed plane or rocket. The radiation is emanating from this wreck. Even with a radiation suit and Radex on, standing close to this thing, we're soaking up 10 rads a second. It came on so quickly that my radiation level increased again and I became even more encumbered. We see a drainage pipe at the bottom of this pit. I tried to enter it, but I was soaking up red so quickly that I died to fatal radiation poisoning on the other side of the grate. Right. Okay, so the problem is that they forced me to walk down that really long ramp right by the crashed plane to get to the grate, giving me ample opportunity to soak up tons and tons of rads. But what if I make the trip shorter? We know that the drainage grate is actually right below us. What if we skip the ramp altogether? Heading that way, we can skip the ramp and hop down. Boom, we're inside. No idea how we'll get back, but we're inside. We gotta make this quick. Moving forward, from this. we immediately find super mutants. All right, we gotta kill these guys quickly before we soak up too much rads. <laughs> this one's dead, okay. Moving forward, we get crippled by deadly radiation poisoning. I needed to get rid of three pounds somehow. Um, well, tell you what, each Nuka-Cola Quantum is a pound. We'll drink two of those. And each Stealth Boy is a pound. We'll take a Stealth Boy. Moving forward, we can stealth right up to this guy and give him a shotgun to the face. <laughs> Bet he didn't see that coming. All right, focus. Moving south, we see the path blocked off, but turning right, we see a bunch of shelves. And on the shelves, glory be, we find a bunch of Radaway. Three pieces of Radaway on a top shelf with some darts. On the middle shelf, two pieces of Radex with a copy of DC Journal of Internal Medicine with two stim packs. On the bottom shelf, an ammo canister with more Radaway and another stealth boy. We can immediately take all of the Radaway we just got so that we can actually move here. We find one ammo canister, but it's locked. So quickly putting on our Vault 101 utility jumpsuit, we can immediately pick it, loot the content, frag mines, and then put our radiation suit back on. Moving left, we find one more shelf with another ammo canister at the bottom. The rest of it is empty. Far to the right, we find another shelf with another ammo canister, a scope 44 magnum, and a blood pack on the top. All right, turning around, we can try to find the end of the sewer, but it's blocked in with rubble. On the ground is the body of a raider. We can loot it, but that's it. Turning around, we can navigate through this scrap. We see the sewer rounds a corner to the southwest. At the very end, we find this path blocked as well, but here we find another body. The body of a wastelander. We can loot it. And another one. We can loot it. All right. Let's get the hell out of here! Turning around, we can race back to the sewer grate to Vernon Square. Then, we can race as fast as game mechanics will allow up the ramp and away from this deadly, irradiated nuclear crash. And upon reaching the road, we can turn around and breathe a sigh of relief. Okay, tell me, did we make our lives more miserable or was that a net gain? Looking at our rads... 662! Yes! <laughs> we're not cured, but it's a lot better than where we were at. I'll call this a win. All right, now to see where we are. We're at a crossroads. We came out the alleyway over there. We see the metro marker pointing back the way we came, but then turning left again. We find another alleyway, which appears to lead to a dead end with a cinema, a ruined building to the southwest, and the Statesman Hotel off in the distance. Well, let's look at the cinema. Let's see, now playing Destination Anchorage. All right, so a pro-American war propaganda film. The Nutty Nanny, must be a Nutty Professor reference. P.S. I hate you, a P.S. I love you reference, and Adios Muchachos. Shouldn't that be Adios Amigos? Hmm. Sadly, we can't enter the cinema, but we can loot the ruins just outside of it. Bottle caps and Nuka-Cola in one Nuka-Cola machine. Then heading down the alley, we find another Nuka-Cola machine. And here I actually missed something. You probably see it. Do you see it? It's there. Don't worry, I'll come back to get it. Back to the crossroads. 
We can move right. From here, looks like we can explore into this huge ruin to the left. But this road ends with a bunch of walls that have crumbled into it. We find a truck and a trailer somehow on top of the rubble. We can loot yet another Nuka-Cola machine here with bottle caps inside. But we can't go any further northwest, so turning southwest, we can creep through the broken wall of this building. And since I was running low on automatic ammunition, I decided to take the 44 Magnum out for a spin. Make use of its scope. Really? Come on! I totally should have made that. The cement was in my way? Bullcrap. Oh! And this little thing packs a punch! I love it! Okay, there appears to have been only two mutants in this building. With the mutants dead, we can creep in to explore. Moving left, we see a door that leads back out to the street overlooking that huge crater. It appears there might have been a tripwire here at some point, but it's been triggered. Well, we don't want to go there. We can loot some metal boxes on a shelf to the right, and then move into an office space. A desk has bottle caps in it. There is a bathroom, but it's completely ruined, and there's nothing of interest inside. Back out to the office, we find one filing cabinet with ammunition inside. And then moving through a broken doorway, we find a box safe on the floor, locked with an easy lock. We can loot 44 Magnum rounds from the ammo canister above it, and then pick the safe to reveal a laser pistol and a small selection of bottle caps. And picking the safe gave me my next level, level nine. At this point, I was sick to death of radiation poisoning. Since Radaway is so rare to find in this world, I need to make maximum use of each and every one of them. So I dumped all 17 points into medicine. That's going to improve the effectiveness of both Radex and Radaway. Then I decided to kind of abandon the gunslinger character build that I've been following. I've already messed it up since I've been sick with radiation poisoning the past several times I've had to level, which has prevented me from choosing the perks the guide wants me to. Plus, next in the guide, it's asking me to take Animal Friend. And yeah, I can see situations where that would be useful, but it's really not paramount. So I'm gonna deviate and kind of go my own way here. Instead of choosing Animal Friend, like the Gunslinger Guide dictates, I'm gonna go ahead and go with Scrounger. I'm not going to a lot of towns and shops and buying a lot of ammunition. I need to maximize every ammo canister I find and Scrounger is gonna give me more ammunition in every box. To the right of the cabinet is a shelf with some Jet and Psycho on it. And here we discover Vernon Square Station. Oh, there must be a station on the other side of this wall somewhere. Inside the cabinet is just an assault rifle. Turning around, we find a long table. There's an ammunition box with shotgun shells inside 13. All right, starting to make use of that scrounger perk. An assault rifle on top and a first aid kit with Radex and a Stimpak. Moving through a doorway, we just arrive in more rubble. Passing through a broken wall, we arrive at the kitchen. Here we find a Nuka-Cola machine, but every broken room just is caved in or impassable. But completing the loop, we arrive back at the cinema. All right, so that's the first floor explored. Now to take one of these staircases to the second floor. The second floor has a number of windows we can peer out of to get a glimpse of what's to come. To the south appears to be the metro station we just discovered, and it's an exterior one, like the Falls Church one. And there's a Pulaski Preservation Shelter nearby. To the east is the Statesman Hotel and the crater with the crashed rocket, and to the north is the cinema, and that's it for the second floor. Now, we shot a mutant on the third floor, but at the moment, I couldn't find a way to get to the third floor, but don't worry, we'll find a way to get there soon. With this ruin explored, we can head back to the road and follow it east back to the crossroads. Our only option now is to move south towards the Statesman Hotel, but we need to hug the wall of the ruin we just explored so we don't get close enough to the crater that we soak up a bunch of rads. So 
tiptoeing along this road carefully, we at last arrive at the metro station we just discovered to the right and the Statesman Hotel to the left. We see that we're on the corner of Basso Boulevard and Salem Street. Moving east down Salem Street, we see that the developers placed an ammo box right next to the crater. Oh. And here we discover the Statesman Hotel towering above us. All right, well, do we risk it? Uh, all right, quickly. Yes. And we didn't take rads. Continuing east, we skirt the crater until we arrive at the door to the Statesman Hotel. The Statesman Hotel is one of the most interesting places to explore in the game. Lots of hotel rooms to explore and rubble, tons of super mutants. But as I say, I've already covered it. So we'll skip it for now. Back out to the street, we can turn right to arrive at a dead end. The path to the east is blocked. The path to the north is blocked. But creeping closer, huh. We get the impression that there's something on the other side of this rubble pile. Peering through the window of this ruined building, we can actually see behind the ruined car and the rubble that presumably was blocking our way east when we came out that alleyway. Is there something over there? If so, how do we get back there? We can't get that way from over here. The road is blocked. And I thought the road was blocked from the other way, too. Hmm. Well, retracing our steps. We could go down the road to the south, towards the hospital. We could move west, towards the metro station. But that pathway behind the wrecked car was nagging at me. So I did a quick save and headed back the way we came just to see if I could find a way over there. Turning east down the street, we see the marker pointing back the way we came, and sure enough, the path east is blocked in with a car and rubble. Oh, but wait a minute. Oh, we can walk over this rubble. We find a metro station. Oh, come on. And we hit another mine. Well, we just discovered Vernon Square East, and the metro marker we find here reads Abernathy. So we've arrived at Abernathy Station. Let's take a look at the map to get our bearings. In our last video, we left Chevy Chase here to travel through Metro Junction and emerge into Vernon Square North here. We just discovered Vernon Square East, the Abernathy Metro Station here. That must mean that the above ground Metro Station that we discovered while exploring the ruin earlier must be here. But for now, let's explore this one. Just outside the escalators is a first aid box with Radex and a stim pack inside and an ammo canister beneath it with 5.56 millimeter ammunition. Heading down the escalators, we find a Corvega billboard, a Metro map, a baby carriage. And then opening the gate, we can enter the Vernon East slash Tacoma Park Metro station. Heading down the ramp and passing through the turnstiles, we see empty lockers to the left and a ticket booth in front of us. Moving to the left of the ticket booth, we find <sighs> more mutants. All right, throwing down some frag mines, we can try to lure them down this alley. Come on, guys, over here. Yeah. Oh, where's the other guy? Oh, there he is! <laughs> Not as effective as I had hoped, but he's dead. That's what counts. After looting the bodies, we see a book lying inside the ticket booth. It's a copy of Lying Congressional Style. There are a bunch of other boxes inside the ticket booth. Moving in, we find a stack of nearly 50 darts in one, but the rest are mostly empty. Nothing else of interest in here. So we can turn around and move down towards the waiting platform. We pass a bunch of lockers and a garbage can along the way. We only find three bottle caps in one. Then pulling out the magnum and creeping down the ramp, we arrive on the waiting platform to find, oh, another mutant. We can quickly throw down a mine and then hide behind this wall. Perfect. Down the ramp, we arrive on the waiting platform. 
we hear bubbling water in this metro station. And peering over the edge, we understand why. Mire lurks. Oh, great, not mire lurks. They were so tough in our second episode. But this platform only has one escalator going down. We can use this as a choke point. So, grabbing some mines to pepper the escalator. Oh, another mutant, what? Found you! God! Kill them all! All right, come and get me! But that's one. Uh, all right, you're gonna come get me or what? What are you doing? Well, he, he's standing in the middle of the escalator. He's not climbing it to the top. Oh, there we go. Come on. Oh, come on let's just finish him off. There we go. But then we hear. I hear some. Oh, well, I was hoping for a fight. The voice of another mutant. So we can throw more mines down on the escalator and then try to find this guy to lure him up. But peering over the edge, I didn't see him anywhere. Well, since we already have a trap laid, maybe we can lure up these Mirelurks. Heading back to the other track. But this Mirelurk got confused. He just stood there in the middle of the tracks while I got off sneak critical after sneak critical. He couldn't figure out where I was. And so pulling out the hunting rifle to conserve the 44 caliber ammo, we can finish him off. He's dead, but before moving on, we see the feet of another Mirelurk as the tunnel rounds a bend. Well, time to nibble his toes. Oh, this is gonna be a nightmare. But with persistence and dumping a lot of hunting rifle ammo, we eventually get him. Now to find that mutant. Hopping onto the railing of the waiting platform, we can walk along it to see if we can get a better shot. And sure enough, we find him under the escalator. Oh, that was a mine but it wasn't one of ours. He didn't go up the escalator. He went west down the tracks. That must mean that the tracks are mined. Well, with the enemies dead, we can explore this waiting platform. We don't find much. Lots of tables and chairs overturned, tin cans and bottles littering the ground. We see a huge pile of bullet casings. Wow, we really made a mess up here. Heading back to the escalator, we can loot our mines on the way down, then loot the body of the mutant, and face west down the tracks. Moving that way, we can hop to the other side. Yeah, this is the Abernathy Station. Moving into the tunnel, we find the body. And peering west, oh, there it is, another mine. Ooh, and this is devilish. The mine is placed directly underneath a bent over fence which means we're not gonna be able to loot this. The fence blocks us from getting close enough to loot the mine. Oh, well, how are we gonna get by? I tried shooting it. But apparently you can't shoot and detonate mines in Fallout 3. But then looking to the south, we see a tiny ledge that we can hop atop to skirt by. And we do so without detonating the mine. But we see another in the middle of the tracks. This one, however, we can get to. Continuing forward, we pass through a bunch of scrap walls to find a passageway moving south towards the other track. The western path is blocked to us, so this is the only way to go. Yeah! Oh, another one? Where is it? There it is. Where's the shotgun? Sure! Well, we can loot the shotgun for the excess shells and to repair the shotgun we have. Moving into this nook, we see that it doesn't connect to the other track. It's too blocked in. But this is a handy little place to rest and recuperate. There is an average locked box safe on the ground. We can put on our utility jumpsuit to pick it. Inside, we find 32 caliber ammunition and a big stack of bottle caps. Nice. 
There are a few more containers here, then a Nuka-Cola Quantum on a second shelf. In a tool cabinet, we find scrap metal. We find a Nuka-Cola machine we can loot. Lockers against the western wall, with really nothing of interest inside. But most importantly, we find a bed on the ground that we can use to sleep. After healing our limbs and resting on up, we can retrace our steps back east. Careful this time to skirt around the mines in the middle of the tracks until we arrive back at Abernathy Station. Moving to the other track, sure enough, we see the western path is blocked. And heading to the eastern side, we find the northern track blocked to the east as well. So our only path is to take this one east. Moving forward, we pass the corpses of the Mirelurks we killed. But off in the distance, we see another one. Let's see what my aim looks like. All right. And I remember these Mirelurks being much more difficult. Continuing east, we see this huge fence just mangled in the middle of the tracks. How did this even get here? What is a fence doing in the middle of these train tracks? On the wall, we find a sign. White line, eastbound Tacoma Station, westbound Abernathy Station. Continuing east, the wall to the left opens up, revealing the other track. And we find another Mirelurk. Okay, sneak criticals are what made it easy last time. Or maybe I just have bad aim. Pulling out the shoddy. <laughs> Moving back, we can cross the tracks to the other side. We have to continue to follow them east. As we do, we round a corner. The tracks to the south are blocked in with rubble, so we have to go north. Continuing north, we see another Mirelurk. right in the face. This water is radioactive, so we can't touch it. Thankfully, it's only on the tracks. So if we keep to the sides and use the rubble as ramps, we can avoid it. Moving east to the other track, we see another Mirelurk down to the northeast. But his back was to me, and I wanted to get him in the face. So waiting for him to move around a bit, we can hope he turns my direction at just the right time. Wait for it. Oh, oh, right in the face. Clip that one. I'm proud of that one. Turning around, we find the southern track blocked. So we have to continue north. The northern path rounds yet another bend where we find yet another Mirelurk. Using the rubble to avoid the water, we can get to a better vantage point and creep just a bit closer to improve our aim. Oh, crap. Lost my sneak critical. But the shotgun makes up for it. Heading into this passage, we see it connects to the other track. There are lockers and a couple of gun cabinets to the right with an assault rifle, a 32 caliber pistol, and ammunition inside. Then, back to the other track, we see this one finally leads to the next station. Creeping forward, whoa, look at this devastation. Where did all of this concrete come from? It couldn't have come from the waiting platform. We find the ramp leading out on the track level. So there was no floating waiting platform here. But peering north, we see more mire lurks. I didn't want to hop into this water, so going back to find some rubble, we can cross to the other side and try to get some sneak criticals off on these mire lurks. No luck, we'll use the shoddy. Thirteen shells left. Ugh. Moving north, we can cross the tracks, and we arrive at Tacoma Station. But there's not much to this one. So heading up the ramp to the north, we can round a corner towards the turnstiles to find another Mirelurk. And 
and then another one that appears to be caught up in the turnstiles. But he doesn't want to follow us down the tunnel. Here he comes. And that should do it. Moving back towards the turnstiles, we can loot a Nuka-Cola machine to the right where we find a Nuka-Cola Quantum. And we find two bathrooms here. Moving into the men's bathroom to the left, we find broken sinks, ruined urinals, and Mirelurk egg clutches lying about. Inspecting each of these stalls, we find eggs sitting in the toilets. Looks like the Mirelurks were using the bathroom as a bit of a hatchery. One of the eggs in one of the stalls has already hatched. The rest of the stalls don't reveal anything, so moving out, we can cross to the other side and explore the women's restroom, but the story is much the same. More Meyerlurk egg clutches and a bunch of empty stalls. So heading back out, we can move east towards the exit, loot some lockers to the right with bottle caps inside. There is garbage and rubbish blocking our path into the ticket booth. There's nothing in there anyway. And then turning a corner, we can loot a new Coca-Cola machine before heading up a ramp to exit to Tacoma Park. We arrive at night amongst a huge ruin. The buildings are not as towering here as they are in deeper DC. This appears to be more of a commercial district. Peering off to the east, we see signs still illuminated after all of these years. But then walking around in the middle of the road, we see super mutants. What are they doing? What? Whoa! And for fun, the super mutants launch a missile at the cars in the middle of the street. But they keep walking this way, and then they spot me. So we'll turn around and head back into the metro. I actually already fully explored Tacoma Park in a previous video. There's a really interesting unmarked quest here, and so I'll place that video next in line in the playlist. But as we leave, we can still bid farewell to Tacoma Park with a brief montage of its best sights.
back into the train station, we now know that it's completely clear, so we can retrace our steps through the Tacoma Park Station, back to the tracks flooded with irradiated water, all the way to the end, until we arrive back at the Abernathy Station. Then up the escalator, we can head across the waiting platform and out to Vernon Square. But before we leave, we can bid farewell to both the Abernathy and Tacoma Park stations. Back at Vernon Square, we arrive in the early morning. Up the escalators, we see that the street lights are still on. They'll flicker off in just a moment. Taking some Radex and putting on our radiation suit, we can quickly skirt the edge of this crater back towards the cinema. We managed to get by by only soaking up a few rads. Then, moving south past that ruin we explored, we can at last turn west to explore this open-air exterior metro station, the one we discovered while we were exploring the ruin. We pass by barriers to move into the station. A bus and car are still stuck on this side 200 years later. To the right, we find a Pulowski Preservation Shelter. Inside is a hazmat suit and a vial of Radex. Up in there! We heard mutants, however, so closing the door, we can use this radiation suit to repair the one we have. Sadly, it's not an advanced radiation suit, so it only provides plus 30 to radiation resistance. All we improve by repairing it is its DR by one. All right, so opening the door, we can step outside to try and find this mutant. One more time. It sounded like he was coming from the ruins behind me, but we already explored and cleared those ruins. Huh. Moving southwest, we can loot a trash can, open the ticket booth, but we don't find anything in there. Crossing to the other side, we see a huge plaza that's mostly empty. To the west is the train station. To the south is another ruin, but our Pip-Boy compass shows an enemy back to the north in the ruin we already cleared. Well, moving south for now, we can explore this other ruin, but inside we find it empty. Examining this ground floor, we don't find anything here, though we find a hole in the wall to the south. Moving that way. God, I tell you, I am just blind as a bat. This isn't even funny anymore. It's just annoying. This hole in the wall puts us right outside the Our Lady of Hope Hospital. We discover it as we get closer, and we find a door leading inside. Our paths to the west and east are blocked with rubble, but as we've already explored this hospital in a previous episode, we'll skip it for now. With the bottom floor clear, we can take a nearby staircase to move to the second floor. But this second floor is likewise completely clear. I explored it to do my due diligence. On the western end, we do find one first aid kit on the ground, and inside some rat away. Oh, and thanks to dumping those points into medicine, this now will remove 82 rads. Popping it, we can take a look at our rads. And that brought us down to 621. Oh, finally. Maybe I can make some headway here. About doggone time. I think we found the answer to our problem. Continuing to skirt the edge of this ruined second floor, we can peer out the window to see the plaza we just came from. No evidence of any enemies in the ruin we cleared to the north. Continuing to explore this floor, we move east, then south. We peer out the southern window to see the ruined facade of the Our Lady of Hope Hospital. It looks like something from the Statesman Hotel has crashed into the hospital. Either that or it's a ruined sky bridge of sorts, or perhaps it was an antenna on top of the hospital that crashed into the hotel. At any rate, this is a dead end. I turned around to move north, but then I saw this yellow canopy serving as a gateway to the train station that we can hop on top of if we leap out of this window. I wanted to make sure that 
previous ruin was really clear, so moving across the canopy, we can hop into the ruin of the next building. At first, we don't see anything. But then as we move to the right to peer on the other side of this wall, we find him. Oh! Oh, but then another mutant pops out. Where did these guys come from? They must have been a roaming mutant patrol that just happened to stumble into the ruins after I left them. It's really my only explanation. Well, we know the rest of this ruin is clear, so hopping back out the window and using the canopy as a bridge, we can again arrive back in that second ruin. But as I was on my way down, I saw a staircase leading up to a third floor. On the third floor, we find some shelves to the left with ammunition inside, and then a cabinet with more shotgun shells. Using a scrap bridge, we can go from Rubble Island to Rubble Island to arrive at a sky bridge. Oh! Oh, they had a sky bridge here connecting the two ruins. <laughs> I didn't even need to use the canopy at all. And here we find the body of the mutant on the third floor of the first ruin we cleared all the way back at the beginning of the episode. Oh, and we see that there's a staircase here as well that connects to the second floor of this ruin. I must have just missed it the first time. Ah, well, mystery solved. Heading back to the second ruin. It's completely clear now, so we can return to the ground floor and head back out to the train station plaza. Moving west, we pass ruined cars until we arrive at a staircase leading up to the train platform. And this is beginning to look a bit familiar to us. Moving north, we find a door that leads back to Metro Junction. We've made our first connection between episodes. We came out here in our episode on DuPont Circle. In that episode, we found two exits from Metro Junction to Vernon Square. The first was from the waiting platform that we took to start this episode, and the second was from this train tunnel, an unmarked entrance into Vernon Square that we explored in my episode on DuPont Circle. Now we've made that connection. Sure enough, heading back outside, we see the Statesman Hotel towering off to the left. But crossing the train platform, we find another door on the opposite side that leads to Freedom Street Station. This appears to be our way out, our way forward into the greater DC ruins, since for us we know that Tacoma Park is a dead end. Now there was that one path that led to the front door of the Our Lady of Hope Hospital. I wanted to explore that. I then popped open my local map to see if there was anything that I missed, and sure enough, on the northern edge of the map, right by that cinema, we find an entrance to the fantastic cinema sewer. How did I miss that? All right, so we've got to retrace our steps here a bit. Heading back down the stairs and crossing the plaza, we can move back to the road and this time move south. Moving south, we pass underneath that broken antenna that crashed between the hospital and the hotel to arrive at the entrance to the Our Lady of Hope Hospital. We see a bloody handprint on the door, and from here we could explore the hospital, but since it's already explored, we can continue south. The southern path leads to the emergency door of the Our Lady of Hope Hospital. Here we find a waiting platform, a number of cars, a military truck, skeleton littering the ground all over the place. There is a first aid box on a table with a stim pack inside. A stretcher by the emergency exit covered in bones with more bones and blood on the ground. Using cinder blocks, we can hop into the back of the military truck. Here we find a couple of boxes, one with Radex, another with Jet inside. There is a first aid box here with more stim packs inside. And that's it. The emergency entrance is blocked in with boards. We can't get into the hospital from here. And the road is blocked in with rubble, so we can't advance any further into DC from here. So... Well, that leaves one mystery to solve. What was that sewer grate by the cinema that we saw on our map that led to the fantastic sewer? Retracing our steps, skirting past the crater so we don't pick up rads, we arrive back at the cinema. Then, taking the road north, we can try and look in this rubble to see if there was anything we missed. I missed it last time. Did you see it? And there it is, hiding in plain sight is the sewer entrance 
to the fantastic cinema sewer. Moving down the ladder, we arrive in a smoke-filled sewer. We see the path to the east is blocked with a gate, and the tunnel then turns north. But in the middle of our path is a tripwire. We can disarm the tripwire and then try to find what it was connected to. Looking up, oh, there it is. A fragmentation grenade bouquet. Well, we already know that our explosive skill isn't high enough to disarm it, so we'll move north for now. Moving north leads us through a door into a room lit only by a barrel fire. We see a room off to the east, but no enemies appear on our Pip-Boy compass, so we can start looting. There is a lunchbox on a small table, and then a bunch of shelves and tables to the west. We find some Radex and Salisbury steak next to a toolbox on a table. There are a number of boxes and shelves tipped over to the west, a couple of containers with minor loot and scrap. On the furthest shelf to the right, we find a bottle of buff out next to more empty mugs and then a fridge filled with irradiated food. Food I'm trying to avoid now so I don't pick up more rads. There is another fridge with more food and then more rad away on a table next to another first aid kit filled with stim packs and purified water. Well, we can grab the rad away. See where that brings us. 539. I like it. With this room explored, we can move east through a door, but we arrive in a hallway with three other doors, south, east, and north. Um, well, let's go through the open one to the south first. This leads us to a room filled with beds and shelves. No enemies. Moving to the right, we find a bin filled with scrap and junk, more boxes on the nearby shelves none of which have anything of interest. Looting some file cabinets to the south, we get some shotgun shells and bottle caps. But that's about it for this room. We can sleep in a bed here to heal on up and repair our limbs, then move back to the hallway and pick the next door. Turning right, we can open the door to the east for now. This leads to another bedroom, this time with a double bed. To the right is a desk with 10 millimeter ammunition inside. There's a shelf next to the bed, but it's just filled with tin cans. The table next to the bed is empty, and so that's it for this room. One room left. Moving out back to the hallway and turning right, we see that this room is locked with an average lock. So putting on our utility jumpsuit, we can pick the lock to find... Oh yes, it's exactly what I needed. To the left is a first aid kit with Radaway and stim packs inside. Against the northeastern wall is a box safe on the ground. I began to pick it, but then I noticed that the door to the safe is actually already ajar. Huh. Well, we still have to pick it anyway. Maybe that's why it's an easy lock? After picking it inside, we find bottle caps, energy cells, and a laser pistol. Then there's a table in the middle of the room covered in Radaway. One, two pieces of Radaway with a Dean's Electronics on the table. On the shelf to the east, we find more Radaway with an ammunition box on the bottom, another one on the middle shelf next to a stack of darts, and a toolbox on top. Taking all the Radaway brings us down to 211. We are officially cured of most of our radiation poisoning. The only negative effect we are now experiencing is negative one to endurance. We see the light at the end of this tunnel. We're almost through the woods. And that's it for the Fantastic Cinema Sewer. There are no enemies here. Very few hazards, save for the tripwire and the fragmentation bouquet. This could effectively be used as player housing if we wanted to, and if we didn't mind having to fight through super mutants on our way home every day. With the sewer explored, we can retrace our steps and head back to the ladder and climb out to arrive back at Vernon Square. <laughs> Then, with Vernon Square completely explored, we can head back towards the train station, move across the waiting platform, and open the door to Freedom Street Station. But before we go, let's bid farewell to Vernon Square with a short montage of all of its best sights.
Now, while shooting footage for new videos, I often smoke a cigar. Every now and then I have to take a break to cut a new cigar or relight a cigar. And that's what I was doing after entering Freedom Street Station, when around the corner... <laughs> ah! Get! Get back! Run! Run! Mouse! Stop it! Yeah! And that's what I get for relighting a cigar when I'm trying to be playing a game. We can finish relighting the cigar. And we're ready. Rounding the corner, we go down a hallway to arrive at the top of a staircase. Here we find two cash registers. But um, one is teeny tiny. What? We've got a regular cash register and this itty bitty one sitting right here. What is this? A cash register for ants? and the tunnels deliver to us even more mysteries. Moving down the staircase, we round a corner to find a ghoul in a room. <laughs> Heading inside, we hear more ghouls, but we don't see any. It looks like there's a level below us, peering over the ledge. <laughs> this goes deep. Hmm. We'll have to find a way down there. This room we just entered is mostly empty, a few boxes and shelves, but nothing of interest. We could hop down into the pit below, but I wanted to finish exploring up here first, taking a catwalk to the southwest. We can cross the pit to arrive on another side with more shelving and bins that's mostly empty, then turning towards the door, down the staircase and rounding a corner, we go even further down. This opens up through a door to the east to arrive on the platform directly beneath the one we just explored. Peering down, we see that the level beneath us is flooded and there's a door down there with a radiation sign next to it. Oh great, more rads. Crossing the catwalk and peering west, we see another radiation sign next to another door. Uh oh. Oh, oh. Hey, where you going? Crap, he's coming for us. We hear a door open beneath us. But where will he pop out? Will he come from behind? Will he come from the north? Or will he come from the west? I kept moving until I could hear something. Oh, the noises get louder. There he is. He came from the west, which means... That's how we'll get down there. We see pipes above us spewing steam. We can move north to explore behind these boxes, but we don't find anything. So heading back to the catwalk, we can take it west and loot the corpse of the ghoul. We stand before the radiation sign by the door. We can grab some radex and don our radiation suit before moving in. We are not picking up rads yet. Heading down the stairs, we arrive at a sewer and we see particles of radiation floating in the air before us. Turning right, oh, of course. The sewer is filled with toxic radioactive barrels. We can try to sneak by these really quickly. So far, so good. Oh, and we pick up a little bit of rads. Continuing east, we round a corner. Moving quickly so as not to soak up rads, we loot the body and arrive at the end of this tunnel. We see two doors, one to the east. It's closed. Opening it. We see it leads to another door. That's probably our way out. So turning west, we find the flooded section. Okay, let's do this quickly. We trudge through the water as we soak up rads to arrive at the bottom of that large pit we saw, but there's nothing down here. Upon realizing that it's empty, we can quickly turn around and get out of this water as fast as we can. Then moving through the door, we can steer clear of the rads. Okay, how'd we do? And we're still in the twos, 213. Not too bad. That rad X really helps. Turning around, we can open the door to the east. This puts us into a large room and we see bear traps on the ground. I was tempted to disarm the traps, but my compass showed at least one enemy on the other side of this door. So I tiptoed around them for now to open the door on the opposite side. But the hunting rival solved our problem. With the ghoul dead, we can examine this room. We find a couple of radioactive barrels, but they don't seem to be producing radiation. There are a number of shipping canisters down here, and looking up, we see a catwalk forming a ceiling above us. 
Back to the floor, we can move east through the door. Continuing down the hallway, we find a staircase leading up, but the path continues to the east. Rounding a corner to the north, we find a small turbine room. All right, so which one do we take? Through the turbine room or up the stairs? Well, if I were a betting man, I would say the stairs probably lead us out. So let's go into the turbine room to see what's here. Creeping in, we turn right to find a shelf with traffic cones and turn left to see... Whoa! What is... Oh, that appears to be a non-hostile wastelander or scavenger. Uh, okay. Well, I won't shoot her. I tipped all of the cones off of this shelf to see if anything was hiding inside, but there wasn't. And with the rest of this room only filled with turbines, we can move west to loot the body of the ghoul and then talk with this lady. What do you need? Hey, it's a merchant in the metro tunnels of DC. Perfect. Have you got anything for sale? Take a look. Welcome to Godforsaken Hellhole. Not much to look at, but it's all mine. <laughs> but her inventory is really disappointing. Does she sell Radaway? No. Radex? No. Stimpex, maybe? No. The only weapons she sells are two frag mines. She doesn't sell any armor and then a small amount of scrap. She has 5.56 millimeter ammunition, but we're doing okay on that, so she didn't have anything I wanted. However, she can repair our gear. Let me take a look. Her repair skill is only 12, however. Our repair skill is better than that, but there are a few things in our inventory that we can have her repair. For example, we've not come upon a lot of Talon combat armor. That stuff is going to be rare to find in the tunnels, and we haven't come upon very many flamers either. Not to mention the fact that our missile launcher is completely broken. I had a stack of around 1400 caps, so I repaired as much as I could. I walked away pretty broke, but most of my gear was battle ready. Behind her is a staircase leading to the next floor. This appears to be her home. We find a bunch of shelves bedecked in stuff, but it's all set to owned. Oh, if we take any of this, we'll be stealing. She has an ammo canister and 32 caliber rounds on one shelf. On another shelf, she's got dirty water, some scotch, some jet, and buff out. On the next shelf, she has a stim pack, mentats, psycho, oh, and right away. Oh, man. Well, she's not watching. I mean... Do I want to be a thief? In this post-apocalypse, it's only one rat away. She won't really miss it, will she? I mean, I killed all the ghouls here. I did her a favor. I made her home safer. I deserve this. Oh. We lose karma, but doggone it, it's worth it. Using the rat away brings us down to 126. And with that, we officially remove all negative consequences of our radiation poisoning. At last, we're whole. But now, I'm a thief. Can I possibly live with myself? Oh. We find a catwalk here that crosses the room with shipping canisters that we pass through below. On the other side, we go down a hallway to find a door that leads to Metro Central. On the other side, we arrive in a room filled with radioactive waste. Ah, oh, come on. All right, putting on our radiation suit and popping some Radex. We can creep forward, though they don't appear to be terribly toxic. We're not picking up a lot of rads. Through the room, we find a door to the south. Opening it leads down to some tracks. Oh. <laughs> And here we are, at Metro Central. Yet another path to Metro Central. I've lost count of the ones we've found so far. But you know what? I don't think I'm ready to clear Metro Central just yet. I'm sure we'll find our way back here eventually, but there was one path that we missed. Retracing our steps and heading back into the Freedom Street Station, we can cross the catwalk, move down the stairs, pass our scavenger friend. Hello who doesn't appear to be missing her right away, into the turbine room, where we see that we missed something. There is a first aid kit on the wall, 
with two stim packs inside. Then moving west into the hallway, we can turn south to head up the stairs. At the top of the stairs, we arrive in a metro station by the turnstiles. The path to the waiting platform is blocked in with rubbish. We see a dead ghoul here. How did he die? Oh, he stepped on a bear trap. Continuing forward, we can try to keep our eyes open for any more bear traps. Where there's one, there's bound to be. Oh, no, oh, come on. Oh, fine. I'll disarm these for the experience. Since I seem to be the only one suffering from them anyway, we can loot a Nuka Cola machine against the wall and then head up the ramp to arrive at Pennsylvania Avenue. At last, we made it back to Pennsylvania Avenue. Remember, we found a way to get here from DuPont Circle, but we've already explored everything to the north. We've explored everything to the east. It's now time to move south. And our next stop south into the DC ruins is to explore Pennsylvania Avenue. But sadly, I am all out of time. We'll pick up right here where we leave off exploring Pennsylvania Avenue in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, such as smartphone cases, posters, pillows, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do, and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon, or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon gain access to a members only section on my discord server and youtube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos and access to ox emojis that they can use in the comments of my videos and in the live chats of my live streams but more than anything i'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon with more brand new videos